Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on using the hair strand designer. Now this is very much in beta and there's a few kind of niggles with it. Uh, I'm trying to get it to save in a local directory but having issues and it means you have to search your local app data directory to find your files. Anyway, we'll check that out in a, mi a minute. So I'm just going to show you how to work this uh, this is a little view window for looking at your strands and you can see this is like the RGB um, controls so if you press space you'll see like a normal map version and this is all generated through these little sliders here it's very much uh, uh, it's beta because it works but it's really, it's really kind of like an alpha version but let's play with some of these controls and then press enter and it will generate some new strands. So the waviness here just means there's going to be more waviness uh, for the strands. You can see it gets more wavy. Uh, you can change the number of strands and it tells you roughly how, how much is going to be in each set. And if you press enter, it will generate those strands and it tells you how many strands in total have been created. And so you can see it's generated the normal map as well. You've got red, green, blue channels being used here and also an alpha channel. The alpha channel acts as the alpha cutout or transparency. And you don't actually see that here. It's it's built into the, uh, the pixels. Um, but you can see the red, green, blue kind of working here. Uh, we can change like the diminish level. So if I increase this, you'll see that this, these will change and it will reduce the number of strands uh, per set. So this is just like how many strands it loses every time it does a set. Uh, the distancing between each strand, you'll see uh, that just, I think that changes, yeah, that changes this, the distancing here. So if I make this smaller, you see it kind of bunches them up together. So this is what I'm using to generate the hair strands uh, for my hair cards. Then I'm just I'm using uh, like bones in 3ds Max to make uh, like a hair hair planes, and then just you know getting it worked around the head. Uh, I've shown that in a different video. So that's pretty much how this works. Uh, let's just increase the diminish. Or can I do three? Let's just do it. Let's just change the number of strands. There we go. So I can get three at the end. So let's try that. So 192 strands, and here we go. We'll get a few stragglers here. So you just change this diminish, and it tells you how many. Maybe I can try and get one. So two, three. Oh, there's a one. Okay, that looks good. Takes a bit longer when you get more um as for more strands. So there we go, we've got a flyway here here we can use, get a nice loose bunch and so on. I can do the diminish a bit more. Like fifteen and one. Let's see what I get there. Okay, and I can do like I can do like some distancing between each set to sort of spread these out a bit. And there we go, the flyaway is not as wavy, so I'll just increase that a bit. Every time you press enter, it'll do something slightly random as well, so you might get a different effect. I'll just do enter again. You see something will change. There we go. So that's a nicer bunch, I think. So once you're happy, just press S and it will save. Take a little while to save. And it tells you save to local directory. Uh, recently saved to see users username, app data, local. History. So the little kind of niggle with it is it's saving here. I can't, for some reason, I can't get it to save uh, in a local space no matter what I do. So it's just a case of jumping into your. Um, local directory so normally just do like app data and then 
go to, oh, let's do that again. Uh, update a local, and it should be under here, strand designer. Sorry, it's such a pain, but anyway, this is what it's doing. And then just the date modif modified, and it looks like it's this one. So it saves it as hair strand normal, and it gives it this little ID, which is just based on the time. It's like a little timestamp. And now open this up with Photoshop. Okay, so it gives you this with the alpha built into it. So don't worry that it looks like this. What I do is go to layer and um, layer mask from transparency okay then I'll click on the mask control a control X and then control shift oh, add a new layer and control shift V then control I to invert it and then control L to levels adjust For some reason the alpha uh, that gets spat out of that program is really um, low so you can you can play with the level adjust here uh, another thing I like to do is use the filter other, uh, sorry, filter stylize oil paint. And I just set these to three, 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 and zero. Okay. And it just cleans it up a little bit. So if I just undo that and then redo it, you can see it cleans up just some of those edges there. I'll also do the same with the color one. So I'm just going to get rid of the mask, delete. And that means I've got my color here. And you see I've got these nice little pips and stuff on it. That's quite nice. It's just going to broke up the, the hair. And I'll do the same filter oil paint. And that just cleans things up a bit. I mean, I don't necessarily need it now that I've got the uh, this doing the job. And if I was to change this to multiply, I can see what kind of effect that's having. And that for me works pretty nicely. You can I can level adjust it more to get rid of this dark middle bit. There we go, just a bit more, like so. And back to normal. Okay, so we've got the hair strands and we've got our RGB. Now we can look at this to see what's happening. The red channel is dealing with uh, like light tones and dark tones here. And that basically allows us to use our two colors. So we're getting these tonal variations in the hair, plus these this kind of like grainy noise, which is nice. Uh, the green channel deals with the root, so if you want more of that, um, you can. I guess you can levels adjust it a bit to get a boost, but it's entirely up to you. I'm going to add some controls as I develop the hair strand maker uh, that you can sort of change these a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's entirely up to you what you change there. So once that's done, you can save these out uh, to your uh, you know, for making hair cards up, and then you just you know line up your UVs with these, and then start making hairs, and add these into my hair shader for you know the Unreal Engine one, or if you've got any other hair shaders, you know try them out. And that's pretty much what I do as part of the process, um, and the shader does the rest. So yeah, thanks for watching, and this little program here was created in Game Maker. Uh, this tool was created in Game Maker and it's the only way I knew how to make this kind of thing really quickly. I uh, hope you like this. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for buying and supporting me and look forward to uh, hearing your feedback for updates. It's always good to adapt to your workflow as well as you know um, creating new ones that appeal to people uh, as an alternative. So thanks for watching. Bye now.